What's going on guys? Hope you all are doing freaking fantastic today. A few weeks ago, one of my subscribers asked me a question. Have you ever tried anything from the clone house, Sensual Obsessions? I was like, no, I haven't. We started talking back and forth. He started talking to me about the house. Then he asked me, would you be interested in picking some of them up? Because I'd really like to hear what you think of them. And of course I'm like, <laughs> fragrances, duh. Of course I'd love to pick them up. So I picked out four fragrances, been test driving them now for a couple weeks, and it's time for me to put my two cents into the mix. Am I obsessed or unimpressed? Stay tuned, cue that intro. Welcome back, my beautiful fragrance family, to another episode of My Two Cents. My name is Brian, and this is the show all about boosting your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent member. So I just recently, this past year, have been really getting into clone houses. For so long, I didn't really know how I felt about them, and then I started picking some up. And now, after doing some test driving of certain clone houses, I have a due respect for them. Because not everybody out there has hundreds of dollars to spend towards really expensive niche and high-end designer fragrances. I totally get that. And you don't always have to just spend a buttload of money all up front just to get some really nice fragrances. Sometimes it's good to get some clones, wear those for a little while, and then save up to get the real thing. And now I've got quite a few clone houses in my collection. I got some Alexandria fragrances, some Oak Cha, some Dua. And new in the mix is Sensual Obsessions. I've seen quite a few reviews on the house. I've heard some really good things. I've heard some mixed reviews. So now it's time for me to put my two cents on the table. So now it's time to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly in today's Whiffs and Sniffs. So like I said, I got four fragrances. Four clones of different high-end fragrances. Two of the clones that I got, I actually own the originals. Well, I owned a decant of one of the originals, but now it's gone because I loved it that much. The test drive was a lot of fun, needless to say. One of the fragrances I used to own decants of, I had two 10 ml decants, but I used both of those 10 mils in like a month because I love the fragrance that much. And the other fragrance, I had never smelt the original. So what are your thoughts on Sensual Obsessions? Do you own any of the fragrances? Are there any fragrances from the house that you think that I should be getting my nose on? And what do you think about clones? Let me know. Drop me some comments down below. So the first fragrance we're gonna be going over was inspired by Bond number nine. Andy Warhol. And the fragrance from Sensual is Andy Warhol. Yeah, they didn't really even think about coming up with a catchy name. They just named it Andy Warhol, who also is one of my favorite artists. The presentation from this house is quite simplistic. I believe this cost me 20 bucks, which is a pretty stinking good price. Um, I will say the one thing that I don't enjoy about these bottles is the tall neck atomizers, because the, as you can see, I hate how these atomizers get stuck. They're, they're so tall and just kind of, eh, I, I don't know. The aesthetics of it I don't enjoy as well. But the atomizers are actually pretty, pretty good. They put out a lot of juice. This is the fragrance I used to have two 10 ml decants of. And I absolutely love Bond Number no. 9 Andy Warhol, which you can't find anymore. And when you can, I mean, people are just gouging the crap out of it. Let me know, do you have any Andy Warhol? If you do, I'll take some decants. So this one right here, I'll be honest, out of all the four, I'm, this is gonna kind of be a spoiler alert. This is the only one that is like really wowed me. I was like, whoa. As soon as I sprayed, I was like, that's Andy Warhol. I'm gonna leave the notes of the original fragrances up here just so we can compare. So just like the original Andy Warhol in this, you're gonna get some nice citruses, but kind of dark citruses, not like super bright citrusy. And then this really nice plum note. Definitely get oud right up top. I start getting some rose very quickly after the initial spray. The cypress is there, but it's a little dumbed down. It's hiding in the background, but it, it's really nice. This is really well blended as well. So all the sensual obsessions claim that they have a high concentration of natural oils, which you can kind of see whenever, whenever I sprayed these on, you could see it just glistening off my skin. And that stuck around for quite some time. The rose is done really well in this. I would say this is about 90 to 95% the original. Get a little bit of a leatheriness coming from the labdanum. The jasmine's done really well. Uh, I get really good projection from this and I also get really good longevity. But I will say that this is the only one that really just wowed me. I mean, I was like, wow. And since you can't really find Andy Warhol or the fragrance that Andy Warhol was inspired by, which is Ralph Lauren Purple Label, this is a dupe of a, another dupe. Bond number nine kind of does that. 
I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that, but a lot of Bond number no. nine fragrances smell like a lot of other popular fragrances. Just done a little bit better, sometimes. I think this is a fantastic fragrance. I really am excited to own this because it smells a lot like the original. And it's really hard to find the original. That is one thing I appreciate about clone houses is sometimes they bring back stuff you just can't find. And they knock one out of the park with Andy Warhol. The next one we're going to be talking about is one that I've never smelled. I just really want to get my nose on it and see from looking at the note breakdown if I could pick out the notes, see if it's a good blend, if it smells anything like what I would imagine the original smelling like. And the original fragrance that this is inspired by from the House of Roja Dove and it's Oligarch. The fragrance is called Total Domination. Again, I, I don't, I've never smelled Roja Dove Oligarch. Um, it's really hard for me to get Roja Dove fragrances. Though, I have decants of all five of the Parfum Cologne series, which are stinking good. I don't get the best performance out of them, which is fine because they smell stinking amazing. I would love to get my nose on more Roja Dove fragrances. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine the other night. And I was like, I think I'm going to get myself a Roja Dove fragrance for my birthday, which is coming up in a few weeks. And then I'm like, I, I can't spend that much money. I mean, it's really tough for people, even like myself, who's got tons of expensive fragrances, to justify spending $500 on a 50 ml, up to $1,000 on a 100 ml. It's just, it's nuts. But that is an episode for another day. Anyways, I would, I do think Roja Dove makes amazing fragrances. Some of the best fragrances on the market. It's just the prices, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I just don't get it. But here we go. So the notes from Oligarch, I think it's lemon and bergamot and lavender, and so does this. Um, this is blended quite nicely. Uh, it's It's got something sharp in it. I don't, I can't really pinpoint it. I don't really get any of the coconut that's in it. I get a little bit of jasmine. I get more citruses than I really get a lot of the aromatics in it. Again, I can't really tell you if this smells anything like Oligarch. But I will say this, this is a really good fragrance. I wouldn't put it up there with the quality of Roja. Roja Dove is going to be one of those fragrance houses that's going to be really stinking hard to get right if you're trying to clone it. Because he uses such beautiful and natural ingredients and his oils and the way he blends is top notch. I mean, way top notch. When I start getting in the dry down that this fragrance, I don't know, there, there's something about it. It's good. It's not compelling. It's not something that just pulls me in. I'm like, oh yeah, man, that smells just like a Roja Dove fragrance. Again, I can't tell you what if it smells like Oligarch, but it's a good fragrance. So performance wise, I get about that five to six hour mark. Uh, projection, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. This sits pretty close to the skin. And I kind of think that's due to the higher concentration of the oils that's in it and possibly the perfumer's alcohol that's being used and it's one of those fragrances i don't mind pressing spray and repeat because it's it's good it is good great no but good this next fragrance was inspired by oud blue intense from fragrance dubois and it's called dreamy experience now i only had a two mil decant of oud blue intense and i'm going to tell you what that fragrance is freaking phenomenal that is a summertime beast. And that is actually what I think I'm going to get myself for my birthday. So dreamy experience compared to Oud Blue Intense, it's so far off, in my opinion. Now, I know that Oud Blue Intense is called Oud Blue Intense, but the Oud in it is just a touch animalic and it's quite sweet. There's something funky in dreamy experience. And I get really bad performance out of this one. The notes are almost blended too much. Like I don't really get the nice cardamom like I do in the Oud Blue Intense. The mandarin orange is there, but it's just kind of dull. There isn't much of the labdanum or the frankincense and the myrrh. The Oud in it is quite synthetic to me, though it might not be. And this is, could be all on my skin. Um, let me know if you have it. It's not a bad smelling fragrance. It just doesn't really smell a lot like Oud Blue Intense. Projection wise, this thing does not project off my skin much at all. It's a good fragrance, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to d deter you from trying it, but this is my experience. You get some of the sweetness from the benzoin. I don't get any of the spiciness. It just doesn't hit the marks of Oud Blue Intense. I would say this is like maybe, maybe 50% Oud Blue Intense. It's trying to crank, but it's not turning over. 
And that's about all I can say about Dreamy Experience. It's good, it's just, it's not Oud Blue Intense. So this last one is inspired by one of my favorite summertime stunners, and it's Zerja 40 Knots. I freaking love that fragrance. And I wanted to see if this was anything like it. It's called Ride the Waves. Again, this one is not really there. It's a little bit higher up. It's about 70%. So with 40 knots, you get this really awesome sea breeze, like this salty sea breeze and these nice woods. You get some green notes and some salty and aquatic. It's beautiful. I love that fragrance and it's super long lasting. But Ride the Waves, it's just kind of dull. Yet again, it's a good fragrance, okay? Uh, but it has a little bit of saltiness. It has a little bit of the, that aquaticness but it just seems a little watered down and quite dull. The saltiness isn't as pronounced. The woods, again, aren't as pronounced. At some point during this fragrance, when it fully dries down, it kind of just reminds me of nice sunscreen. Not sun tanning lotion, but sunscreen. It, it's kind of oily and lotion-like, but not in a bad way. It smells good, but it misses quite a few of the marks of 40 Knots but I get really good performance out of it, so I get about eight to nine hours. Now the projection on it is actually decent. Well, I get more than arm's length for a couple hours. In fact, I had a few people compliment me when I was wearing it. And so, yeah, you, you will get noticed and it does smell really good, but it really doesn't smell like 40 knots. I might be a tough cookie because 40 knots is freaking phenomenal. If you haven't tried that fragrance, then definitely get your nose on it. Test drive that bad boy. It is awesome in the summer. So, my overall assessment of Sensual Obsessions. They make good fragrances, though they don't hit a lot of the marks that some of the clone houses I put my nose on do. But I will say this, they are very well priced. I think $35 for a 30ml is actually a good price because you can tell that they have higher concentration of oils in their fragrances. All these smell really good. They're still working the bugs out. I actually look forward to trying more from the House Essential Obsessions. And let me know which ones you'd like me to do a review on, because I'd be happy to. So there it is, guys, Essential Obsessions. So all in all, yeah, I think they're a good fragrance house. I, I think they got a few bugs to work out, but that's okay. I'm sure they will. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, you are stinking freaking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails. <laughs>